Hey, what's up, everybody? We are back with the Spinning Fire podcast, and we are talking life, leadership, and lingering topics, i.e. the topics that no one wants to talk about. And we are back with the boss man, Pastor Del Yonach. How are you doing? Hello, Dubsy. Good to be back. Yeah, it's so excited good to be about back. today. I think it's going to be an incredible conversation. I'm excited about today, too. And we were chatting a little bit before we jumped on, uh, on air this morning. And uh, just about how um, this will probably be the most uh, profound, real, and honest conversation we've had on Spinning Fire so Absolutely. far. Absolutely. I'm excited, but I think honesty is going to make it special. So, yeah. That's incredible. And uh, super excited. Uh, a couple of weeks have gone by since we did our last podcast. And, it feels uh, like a couple of years. It feels like a lifetime ago <laughs> because so much has happened. We were obviously yeah. put back onto level four restrictions as a country and uh, limited to gathering again as a church. Has uh, since then gone back to level three. But in between the level four and level three, we had some. Uh, all chaos break loose, to be honest, in the country. Jeez, yeah, it's been a crazy time, that's for sure. No one expected, put it this way, no one expected that. No, all the warning signs were there, but no one really true. took them seriously, that is to be true. honest. I think yeah. there were a couple of little murmurs of things going to happen, and I don't think we expected the um, the craziness that actually ensued. Yeah, which is in, in some ways quite encouraging because we assume the best. Absolutely. So I guess if you want to spin a positive spin on it, it's we assume the best of the moment. The murmurings, you're right, they were there. Yeah. The signs were there, but we had just assumed that we were in this together, and obviously things changed a little bit. So, Yeah, they moved quite quickly. And uh, I know there's, there's so many positives that we're going to take out of this conversation, Absolutely. even though we're going to chat about some, some real stuff. But uh, the heart is to always find the positives and to speak life over our nation and over our people and over our church. Absolutely. And uh, it's going to be an exciting little chat. So we were, um, it's amazing. We weren't in uh, KZN at the time. And I know KZN and Johannesburg being the two major affected um, uh Provinces. provinces of the uh, of all the chaos. We were up in Pumalanga, so we were just watching from a distance, and uh, it was quite amazing actually, because uh, uh, looting, riots, um, uh, theft, a whole lot going on, um, a whole lot of chaos ensued. Um, and I wanted to just catch up with you this morning and just chat a little bit about a, a couple of things. Um, yeah, one of them being uh, what people are feeling, the emotions they're feeling after these moments. Get some ideas. How the church responds. Um, how we respond as leaders and uh, just to put some courage back in the people and help yeah, them move like forward that. through this next season. Well, I, listen, I hope whoever's watching gets a bit of courage because we don't have the solutions. I mean, we're just going to chat honestly and just yep. give it our best shot to say what, what showing up looks like in this season. Uh, but let it encourage you. Like at the, at the core of anything we say today, let it just be real and encourage yeah. you. So. And just a moment to thank all the MPOs, NGOs, churches, oh, uh, communities, people from the front line, wherever you were, uh, we heard some stories of some nurses that hadn't uh, had a nurse for years, jumping back into hospitals and that making sure that they can get out though. there and help the people suffering with COVID. Uh, people cooking meals for guys on the front line, uh, the community coming out to protect um, our area and the surrounding areas around us, NPOs and NGOs, making sure people are being fed in the communities. That was amazing. It was really an incredible, incredible moment. In fact, that part of the story hasn't even been told yet. Like no. I, think, I think we've all felt it and we've yeah. seen it like in the pockets, but that was the best part of the whole story. It is was. like. And it and it was it was multiple people groups. It wasn't just like certain little niche moments. Like everyone just rallied together, uh, barring a few, to make it better for everyone. So so good, so so good. I was on the outside looking in, and uh, I saw our church respond in the most incredible way. That's great. Um, I want to just ask you, um, in these moments, how does how does the church respond to to chaos like this? <laughs> Well, look, I don't know if I don't know if we did it well, but you know what I'm like, Dubsy. Yep. I'm always like, we bring peace, not panic. Great. Like that's just our church, like mantra. Like the kingdom of heaven is a kingdom of peace, not panic. Yep. And uh, Maya Angelou is an incredible voice and an amazing person. And she once said this. She said, "We should learn in our lives to wage war as strategically for peace." as what we have for war. Let me say that again. So we should learn to wage peace as strategically as we've learned to wage war. Brilliant. And I think that's the church's mandate. Like when these things happen, what does it look like for us to pour our energy into waging peace? Like bringing resolution, bringing comfort, bringing support, all those kind of things, rather than, you know, getting their emotions hotter than they already are, which is going to happen anyway. So good. And just leaning in, I know we communicated a little bit while I was away, just chatting about what was going on and what was happening on the ground and how we'd responded to, mm. um, from the outside, it looked phenomenal. Oh, that's great. And uh, look on the inside, it felt like we were upside down. But And, <laughs> and it always does. Sometimes yeah. life always looks good and pretty smooth sailing on the outside, but so um, on the inside, there's a whole lot of different emotions going on. And we want, I want to chat a little bit about um, some of those emotions. All and of those emotions. All of those emotions. <laughs> and uh, I mean, there was anger, anxiety, frustration, yeah. fear. But before we jump onto those, I actually wanted to ask you, how much um, frustration or uh, effect from the pandemic oh, wow. do you feel actually resulted in 
um, the response from both the guys uh, rioting, looting, and from the people protecting the communities. Yeah. How much do you think the um, the press of the pandemic? Yeah, there's a lot of pre- there's a lot of pressure right now. I, I, like I, I don't know what the factor is. I don't know what the detail of that is, but for sure we could all feel like when the riots kicked off. We could feel uh, in many different people groups, different feedback was the same. We yep. were all just at our end. Yep. And and that was like the cherry on the top. And so I think there's a lot of uh, post-traumatic burnout that's still going to take place from this moment, which is why I think these conversations are so helpful to Absolutely. go. Like actually anger bursts, outbursts are not bad. You dropped motion. a podcast a couple of days ago. It's yeah. available on a couple of social media platforms. Where can people find that? Because I believe uh, that's going to be incredible Check out my YouTube tool. channel, Dylan okay. Yarnock's YouTube channel. I yep. did a five stages of grief podcast. Brilliant. And yeah, hopefully it'll be really helpful for people because we all, grief is when you experience loss. Yeah. So someone says, well, I didn't lose any loved ones in the pandemic. Yeah, but you lost momentum in your business. Correct. And that means you got to face the reality of that, which is grief. You got so to good. grieve, you know? So yep. yeah, hopefully that'll help people. But I think the pressure, like you said, it was on already. That was like a cherry on the top. And now we're all trying to recover. In fact, a lot of uh, like psychologists and people that are commenting on this current state yep. in South Africa, not around the world, but in South Africa, are saying they're watching the signs for one of the biggest depressions of turns we've ever had and so guys that rallied around protecting their communities felt purpose next thing we're back to normal no more purpose yeah and so the dip after those emotions into nothingness sure is really challenging and the same is true from communities that have been affected by it you know yeah. one day we're being forced into some kind of behavior we don't want to do and the next day we've got to go back to work and pretend it's, it's look I don't know what the detail is, but society is under big pressure. We're going to need to learn to find great calm because it's not an easy road out of here. Awesome. And we've got uh, a few tools that we're going to be using in this next season to, yes. to help people deal with, uh, with the grief, with anxiety, with the frustration, with the loss of not only uh, this moment um, with riots and um, absolute chaos breaking out in our nation, but also just with the... Um, with it, dealing with the pandemic yeah. and what that's meant. Yeah, and for kids as well. I know we're doing some resource for kids, helping them process this because I think we're underestimating uh, the mental impact on our children. Correct, yeah. And actually they can be healthy, so let's help them. That's so good. So you can check out all that content will be available on all the social media platforms um, uh, and on Facebook, on YouTube, um, Jump online, make sure that you're checking that out because all that content is going to be there. It'll all be available and the links or leads to that content uh, will drop in the comment box below on the bottom of this podcast. So that's awesome. All righty. Uh, what does it look like for you to lead uh, in this moment? So what would you say to, uh, yeah, look. And I, anybody I, I, and everybody. Yeah, anybody and everybody. <laughs> I know you don't have the answers, but uh, just from the Dilyana heart, what, what do you, how, how would you encourage leaders in this moment just to stand up and lead? Well, we were talking right about Rick Warren, who's a pastor yep. in America. In fact, many would call him the pastor of America. It was Billy Graham. Yep. And Rick Warren, just through the seasons of life, his journey, the Purpose Driven Life book people might know about. Um, if you're watching this, you might have heard about that. But Rick Warren said something so beautiful. He calls it the ministry of presence. Yeah. And he said, like, the deeper the pain the fewer words we use. Just show up and shut up. Brilliant. Like, excuse the language. Show up and you? shut up. Yeah. I love it, Dill. I'm a simple guy. I like, yeah. um, but uh, it's so good. The ministry of presence. The I just thought that's really presence. powerful. So you say how do leaders show up in this time? Well, I think the greatest leaders just know how to show up and shut up. Like I think opinion, let's hold our opinions. Yep. Uh, we don't have solutions. We don't have, uh, I don't think we have a valid contribution in opinion to what just happened. Yep. Uh, I think there's way too much going down. I certainly don't feel like I'm skilled or qualified to comment on it. Yep. And so what I'm trying to do as a leader, this is just me, I'm just trying to show up and be quiet. Like people are experiencing extreme pain. Brilliant. Businesses are lost. Some people have lost family to the pandemic. Uh, children have had to rethink. We've got a friend whose son was head boy of their primary school, hasn't experienced that. We've got others in high school that were geared to play Craven Week rugby, hasn't yep. experienced that. There's pain on many levels. And I think the ministry of presence could be a good word for somebody. Just show up and... Shh. <laughs> Sharp and shh. Let's leave, <laughs> Let's leave it there. I think that would be brilliant. But that's amazing. And I think um, so often people sh- uh, shy away from showing up because they don't have the words. Yeah, that's so true. And I feel like that statement, show up and shh, is going to be, <laughs> it's going to give people freedom and yeah. uh, the ability to just show up and be present. Yeah. Um, I, I know that uh, when uh, people have lost loved ones, whatever the case may be, we always feel like we need the right words before we send the message or whatever the case is. Yeah. Hey, sometimes it's as simple. I'm thinking about you or I'm here for you. Shout totally. if you need anything. I think those moments are way more powerful than we, um, than we anticipate. Yeah, I like the idea that we just settle this thing that we're not the solution. No. Jesus is the solution. Always. We've always believed that. But we're a part of a story that he's bringing together, you know. And so... 
I think for us to be present is to be in the story. Yeah. And uh, and so yeah, don't don't feel like you have to be the solution to someone's pain. Just show up in it. So good. Yeah. So so good. You have permission to just show up in their pain and just to be present in their presence uh, in on. these moments. So you don't have to have it worked out. You don't have to be profound in any statements anyway. Just show up and be present. Alrighty, this is going to be a biggie. <laughs> How would you encourage some business guys in this moment? I mean, we've heard of uh, people that have literally upped and left in a week and uh, left the country. They've uh, immigrated overseas. Um, they're wrapping up all their details from over there. Um, there's business owners around us that may be slightly anxious about the future of our nation and what that might mean. Yeah. Um, do you have anything uh, out there just to encourage those guys um, in this next season? Of I'll, t- I'll tell business? you what I went through these last few weeks, right? Because yeah. I'm a human like the rest of us. Correct. Um, and so the it's week, great to know. Yeah, yeah, more so than people realize. But the week after riots, um, I was flat. Like yep. I was, I had no energy left. And I, I think it was a multi, so many things. I'd done a few late night shifts. I'd serve people with food. Uh, our team was super active. Like you said, we just yep. kept showing up. We did some cleanup work. And I was actually just super tired, motion, emotionally, mentally, physically. I was just tired. The week after riots, I went home and I slept for like three hours during the day. I, you know me. I don't do don't siestas as day. well. No, yeah. no, no. Not a farmer, bro. I haven't no. ever learned the art of a siesta. <laughs> no. And so I was sleeping for three hours in the afternoon, like just ran. I just had nothing left in me and I did that for a week. And I knew that I wasn't in a space to add anything valuable to strategy or vision in our church. And I'm just telling my story. Yeah. And so for a week, I just rested up. I found, and honestly, it wasn't the best thing because I felt like I should have been doing more or adding value or whatever. And I just knew I needed rest. Yeah. I rested that week. Saturday, I started to feel a bit more human again. Sunday, I preached in church, still a bit tired. Monday morning, I woke up with fresh vision. I literally felt like dream bubbles start popping up. Brilliant. And that's, that's, my, that's my language, right? So I knew that I was ready to start moving forward. I think what I encourage business guys to do is don't try and come up with a perfect strategy until you've solved the issues of the inside. Like Brilliant. let your heart come, calm down a little bit. Uh, find that inner peace. Uh, rest up if you need to. I know it's I know it's different for all of us. Yep. Some people are like, I've got to get to the office. Look, do what you need to do. But for me, I realized that I wasn't actually a great contribution to our church Brilliant. until I was rested. And so I just suggest to people, find the rest you need so that you can add value when it's required. That's a classic example of go easy on yourself when it's hard. Exactly. So you can go hard on yourself when it's easy. Say it so again, Dubsy. Go easy on yourself when it is hard so that you can go hard on yourself when it's easy, so take true. those moments to work out what's going on internally before you express that in any form of vision to your business. I actually love that. That's brilliant. I love it. And that, that's actually a cycling analogy. So what they say is in cycling, uh, races aren't won on the hills, they lost on the hills. Wow. So how you manage your energy on the hill is whether you choose to lose the race or not. It's not if you're going to win. It's actually how you manage your energy matters for how you finish. finish the race. And so, yeah, so go easy when it's hard. Go easy when there's a hill before you. Hey, look, we've all climbed a hill, whether you're in business, whether you're in family, whether you're building church, no matter where you find yourself in this moment. It's time we've all climbed a hill. So if you're out there watching, not just the business guys out there building business, but anyone, go easy on yourself in this moment. Love it. Take the time you need to, re- uh, to be refreshed, to be relaxed, uh, so that when, uh, when the time comes to win and finish strong, you had all the energy you may need. Um, I want to just wrap this podcast up with, um, with one scripture, um, and it's from Exodus 14. And I absolutely love it. It's, it's Moses leading his people. He said, I'd rather, it would rather have been better for us to go and serve the Egyptians uh, than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance of the Lord will bring you today. The Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. Come on. That is beautiful. I love it. And it's, uh, it's the same thing of uh, just show up and shh. Yeah. But basically it's calm your fear, stand your ground and shh. shh. <laughs> just, just calm the fear. Speak yeah. to the fear. I mean, we chatted, a little, we chatted on it briefly a little while yeah. ago. Speak to the fear. Don't, don't ignore it. Yeah. Uh, acknowledge what it looks like. That's find part out what of it grief is. is actually letting yourself feel the fear. Yeah. Feel the, the anger and sometimes even vent it. But I love, I just love that. It's like, let it calm down. Yep. Stand your ground. There's something yeah. about that. Like show up. Show up. Exactly. It's a get ministry of presence. Come right? on. Yeah. So I love it, Dubsy. That's awesome. And then shh. And then shh. That's <laughs> so good. Calm I mean, that, your fear. That week I slept, just to add this. Yeah. That week I slept. Honestly, you know what it was doing? It was me just shh. Brilliant. Dill, you don't need to answer another question. You don't yeah. need to have the perfect just shh. <laughs> so you need only you be still. That's I love that. So be, good. Be still and know that I'm Lord. The that. Lord will fight for you. Amen. I think we should pray for some guys today. Come on, I'd love that. So if you're out there 
and you're feeling like you're facing a water that hasn't parted, the way hasn't been made clear, you haven't got vision, you're feeling fatigued and tired, and it feels like this enemy is coming down on you, you just cannot get away from this overwhelming fear, uh, we want to pray God's grace and peace of your life. So Jesus, I just think of everyone that's listening yeah. to this now. I think of anxious hearts, um, panicked minds. I think of blurry vision. And I think in all of that, Jesus, that you have the solution. You are the solution. And so I just pray your peace over hearts and homes now. Yeah. I pray your peace over anxious minds now, Jesus. I pray your peace over families and over businesses, God. And I just thank you, Jesus, that you do have vision for us and you do yeah. have strategy for us. And so we wait on you with expectancy, knowing that you yes, will Lord. bring to fruition what you want for our lives. And so we just thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I want to encourage you all today to, uh, to be still. The Lord will fight for you. Amen. Pastor Dill, thanks so much uh, for another incredible podcast. It's been really cool just to catch up and chat around these very real things and very real topics and just how to help people move forward Amen. in this next season. It's been amazing. Hey, if you've enjoyed today's leadership content, I want to encourage you to click over here for some more content on Pastor Dill's leadership podcast. And you can click over here to jump onto Pastor Tess's podcast. Some incredible content on there as well. Thank you so much for joining us for Spitting Fire. We'll catch you next time. Cheers.